Hello, Canada. Hello, and Canada. Hockey hockey hello, fans. Canada. And hello, hockey Canada. Fans in the United this is Hockey Night. How are you doing, Lenny? Ron, we're exhausted, for God's sake. So we're out here. We, we got to go get dressed. It's a big game against Chicago, you know. I'm right around 160 mark, and that's right where my goal is against. You got to be careful. I, I got to either eat light or, <laughs> or eat heavy. Well, you're watching a very magical moment here at the Molson Center. No, no, no. I got lots to do before that. I'll get into that. No, just hang tough here for a minute, like I told sir. Well, they were certainly upset with this show. They seem to think we're telling people too much about hockey, and they weren't too happy about that. Your hockey night in Canada, how does that feel? That's a lifelong dream. A lifelong dream? Yeah. You know, a little nervous. I hadn't played in it in almost two weeks, so you get the rust out a little bit. hockey fans in the United States. Welcome to this closing celebration as the Toronto Maple Leafs say goodbye to Maple Leaf Gardens. And here to get things going, let's go down to Stomp and Tom Connors. Game, 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 game
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our host for this evening's ceremony from Hockey Night in Canada, Mr. Ron McLean. Thanks a lot, Paul. Pat Quinn, Ricky Lee right here, the Leaf Doctors. Stay right there, fellas. I don't know if my heart can take this. Thanks a lot, folks. As you can see, I finally decided to let Don Cherry outfit me just this once. There's a running theme throughout the gardens this evening about father and son. You see those 11 Stanley Cup banners, the name Con or Stafford Smythe's involved in every cup victory. And how about Doug and Paul Morris? Paul's dad invented the barrel flood system that we saw Eddie Shack help out Sammy here just a couple of minutes ago. And I don't have to tell you, Bob Cole's sitting up there, Foster Hewitt, Billy Hewitt have both been up there. But the true voice recently of the gardens is Mr. Paul Morris. Paul. That's right, folks. Let's hear it for a guy who never went out of his way to steal the show. And that's for your dad, Doug, too, Paul. I'll just ask you to, if you can, put into words what you have felt on this day. Well, a lot of mixed emotions, of course, and uh, it's, uh, it's a sad night in some ways, but it almost feels like a celebration here, a uh, celebration of 68 years of all kinds of events in Maple Leaf Gardens, not just hockey, but hockey primarily. And uh, I think it's, I feel like I'm leaving my home, the family home that we've been in all our lives, and I think most Canadians feel the same way. Uh, even... Even, even if they didn't live here the way I did, they lived here in their dreams, and they'll never forget the great events they've seen at Maple Leaf Gardens. Paul? That just goes to show you you never tried to steal the show because you just about did. That's just beautiful to you and your dad. Uh, all the best, Paul, uh, at the new Air Canada Centre, and you're the electrician. You're the one who tells us about the goals on both counts. Thanks for keeping us current. And we'll get Thank back you, to you here tonight. There's Paul Morris. We get the father and son idea going. Grapes would always want to tell, as you saw in the coach's corner, he talked about his beloved Timothy. He'd always want to talk about how he'd walk to school with Timothy five miles to school and back every day. And of course he had to, they were in the same class. Okay, never mind that. No, Grapes was 100% right when he made reference to Foster Hewitt and Con Smythe, the major this evening. That's where we have to begin. We have the Teams sequestered back in the North End, the 48th Highlanders standing by, but before we get to that, let's go back to 1931, when Con Smythe decided to build his dream. We got Nancy and the crowd's got so, and reckless bulging at the seams. We were competing with New York and Boston, so we decided we had to have a, a new arena. Smythe's dream was a miracle for that depression time, but 196 days after breaking ground, the gardens was ready to shine, and King Clancy was in awe. When we came in here to the gardens, it was like coming into a palace. You know, and I used to say to the fellas, where are they gonna get the people to fill this thing? The place was bursting at the seams, a triumph for Smythe and the team. The 48th Highlanders helped raise the curtain, then Foster took control, and launched an era. Primo Jackson and Conacher are skating out there, all ready to go for this historic event where the NHL is starting in Maple Leaf Garden. The Hawks won the first game, but the building captured the hearts. Smythe's dream was a raging success, and the house built for hockey was poised to become a stage for all Canada. Graced by royalty, our queen came to call. The King showed his only concert away from home. The chairman of the board found his way too. And these walls took in the tour that changed everything. 
They all played the gardens. There were wrestling wars. Whipper Billy Watson ruled the ring. Skating shows that dazzled pure on ice magic. Circuses that played to every young at heart. And Muhammad Ali, greatest of all, fought with George the Brave. Garden's memories to last forever. But it always came back to hockey and the Leafs. To Conacher and Primo and Busher, Clancy and Red and Ace. Heroes in blue, they gave the Gardens a Stanley Cup in the very first year in their brand new home. We clear the track for two reasons. One's for Eddie, he's a little later. The other is for this immediate moment. Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Captain Roland White, the pipe major is Sandy Dewar, and Chris Reeser is the drum major. Would you please welcome the 48th Highlanders of Canada? They've inaugurated every season at Maple Leaf Garden since 1931, the 48th Highlanders. Well, folks, we're going to take you through 68 years now, from George Armstrong, who played 1,187 games, to J.P. Parisi. I can't believe an NHL great played just one for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But you, 15,700, represent the fans who've been here for seven decades to cheer on the men in the blue and white. We're going to do this by decade beginning in the 1990s. Ladies and gentlemen, the Toronto Maple Leaf alumni. Let's begin with a speedster who played for the Maple Leafs and was a great coach after his NHL playing days, Louis Franceschetti. Here's a man who scored 708 goals, including the last at Chicago Stadium, Mike Gartner. A little elbow grease, compliments of Nick Kiprios. A great world junior super face-off artist, John McIntyre. The firmest handshake in hockey, coach Doug Carpenter. Let's move now to our memories and dreams of the 1980s. A Memorial Cup winner with Dougie Gilmore in Cornwall, here's Fred Boimstruck. We'll always remember a 63 save performance for Yuri Sirha. One of the great snipers of the Western Hockey League and a Toronto star, Builder Lego. 
He played three years for the Leafs until a back injury ended his career. Slava Duras. Chicago born, so it was nice for him to see the Leafs and the Hawks close it out. Tommy Fergus. Five seasons, rugged forward, Stu Gavin patrolled the Leafs lines. A right winger acquired in the Ian Turnbull trade. Here's Billy Harris. Another big name trade. Lanny McDonald went. Pat Hickey arrived. Here's Hitch. Defenseman number four from London, Greg Hotham. A tenacious left winger from Dresden, Ontario. That's Jeff Jackson. A great power play on the Leaf team was responsible for the quarterback, Tom Curvers. NHL official and former tough guy, Kevin McGuire. Here's a man who had his tee before every game, Brad Marsh. Portland Winterhawk sensation, Gary Nyland. Power forward, Mark Osborne. The only Leaf to wear 99, here's Wolf Paymont. One of Don's favorites, here's Rene Robert. An Alberta boy who made good at the gardens for six years, Rocky Saganuk. The second Blackhawk to score 50 goals after Bobby Hall and a star here in Toronto, Al Secord. Ladies and gentlemen, Motor City Smitty. Guy Kinnear and Danny Lemlin, the two great trainers from the 80s. And general manager and now radio star, Gord Stelic. Let's move to the 1970s and we'll begin with Windsor's Pat Boutet. From Sarnia, great skater, great penalty killer, Jerry Butler. What a beginning for Jim Dory. Set a penalty minute record like a good Kingstonian ought to. Former national team member, Dennis Dupere. Quick is the word for Timmy Ecclestone. Solid describes Brian Glennie. Here's a chap who played for Harry Neal in Vancouver, John Grisdale. A goaltender who used to stop pucks and now stops thieves up in Timmins, Paul Harrison. Remember the great penalty killing of Jimmy Jones. Here's Toronto assistant coach Rick Lee. It's over on the bench there. You see Rick next to Pat. From Barry, another enforcer, Dan Maloney, great NHL coach. From McKeck's place at Halliburton, there's Walter McKechnie. Here's Howie, the star of City TV, Jim McKinney. They love you, Jim, and they should. Gary Monahan from Barry and the Peterborough Peets. Here's Sarnia strapping Bob Neely. Ace Bailey insisted they give this Leaf his number six. How about it, Ronnie Ellis? When he arrived at the gardens, he said, Mr. Ballard, your goaltending troubles are over. Two stints as a Leaf netminder, Mike Palmatier. From the 1962 Memorial Cup champions, Mike Pellick. From Perry Sound, here's Gary Sabarin. A Toronto Marley from Elmira, Rod Sealing. Once loaned his skates to Daryl Sittler when Daryl was a kid. From Leamington, and a TV star for Hockey Night in Canada, Brad Selwood. From Summerside, Prince Edward Island, Errol Thompson. Nobody was ever smoother than Hockey Hall of Famer, Normie Ullman. 
And here's another man who could move the puck. That's Jack Valiquet. Tough as they come, Kurt Walker. From Panoka to the NHL, Stan Weir. If I said done like dinner, would you know it's Tiger Williams? Here's one of the kindest men ever to be involved in our game, Jim Gregory, the great GM of the Maple Leafs, now with the National Hockey League. Inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1992, that's machine gun Lanny McDonald. Inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1986, ladies and gentlemen, the King, Boreas Solving. And to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1989, Captain Daryl Settler. John McCauley refereed the night. Daryl got his 10 points. John, we love you. Hope you're enjoying the show, too. Let's move to the 1960s. We'll begin with a 63 Cup winner who won the Calder Trophy that year, Kent Douglas. From the 67 winners, Brian Conacher. A left winger who starred for Detroit and Toronto, Larry Jeffrey. 1978, he went to the Hall of Fame, Marcel Cronovo. Here's the stemmer, Pete Stemkowski. He once challenged Gordy Howe to a fight. That was for you, Teeter. Here's Shaky, Mike Walton. One of the greatest coaches in NHL history from Sudbury, Radar Al Arbor. The heartthrob of the 1960s, Dickie Duff. Two Stanley Cups in Toronto, and he also made it in New York. Bob Nevin. Two Stanley Cups, and what a touch around the net. That's Jim Pappen. Three Stanley Cups, and what a touch, period. Carl Brewer. And how about what this man has given to the game, both through his books and through his play? That's Hinky, the great stick handler, Billy Harris. Three Stanley Cup rings in Toronto for Eddie Litzenberger. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Boomer Bob Bond. Another great defenseman, Larry Hillman. The finest black hat in the house, the entertainer, Eddie Shaq. King Clancy's proudest moments came watching his son, Terry Clancy. Here's Duke Edmondson. Trainer Bobby Haggart. Could have been a baseball player, Murray Oliver. Three Norris trophies. He led the playoffs in scoring prior to the expansion. The last defenseman to do it, Pierre Palat. How about a hand for the head coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, two-time Jack Adams trophy winner and a rookie Maple Leaf, Pat Quinn. Calder trophy winner, Britt Selby. to the Chief, George Armstrong. Another Hockey Hall of Famer, ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Bauer. A member of Parliament, Lady Bing and Norris Jordan. 
trophy winner, 1969 Hall of Fame inductee, and he gave us pyramid power, Red Kelly. A Calder Trophy winner, he went to the Hockey Hall of Fame, and he went to the Senate. Ladies and gentlemen, the big M, Frank Mahovlich. Game-winning goal in the 1967 Stanley Cup, Bob Holford. Another big strapping defenseman who's in the Hockey Hall of Fame, that's Alan Stanley. Ladies and gentlemen, we now move to the era 1946 to 59. We'll begin with Shonovan Saskatchewan's former Marlboro, Gary Altcorn. They used to kid the Leafs had great scouts in Foster Hewitt and the Basilian Fathers. Here's St. Mike's goaltender, Ed Chadwick. His son Paul also made the bigs. How about it for Cal Gardner? A body checker in the mold of Mike Pekka, Ron Hurst. And if you went into the corner with this man, it was worth your life. Bill Chuzda. Here's speedster, Danny Lewicki. A Theron Flurry-like star in his day, Fleming McKell. The Goose, John McCormick. Still in the game, helping Buffalo with scouting, Rudy Begay. From the Barry Flyers, Jim Morrison. Here's a hard rock, Gus. Mortson from St. Mike's, Noel Price. Another St. Mike's grad, Mark Rio. Quick, quick. And he also won the Lady Bay, Sid Smith. From the Hockey Hall of Fame, here's Harry Watson. From the 1931 to 1945 period, we're very honored tonight to have six former Leafs. We'll begin with cup winner from 45, Elwin Morris. A left winger who could really fly and led the NHL in goals in 1946. Here's Gay Stewart. The Mets brothers gave us so many thrills. Here's Donnie Metz. The man who once scored four in a game, Hank Golda. Three assists in one period alone. Here's Pete Langell. And there's only one more Maple Leaf to meet. And it can't be me that introduces him, can it? Here's Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from the 1932 team, Mr. Red Horner. players but the true measure of the men is when you close your eyes and you hear their name what comes to mind and there's great memories involved in seeing all 105 former Leafs who've joined us here tonight for all the fans across Canada we thank you men for the thrills you've given us and we thank you 48 Highlanders of Canada
Highlanders. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, if you're to live out your fantasy, the huge connection between the backyard rink and the front room where you watch the game on radio first and then ultimately television is to play in the company of these men. But if the dream really works well, you make it to hockey's highest honor, which is the Hockey Hall of Fame. And we'd like to take some time now to acknowledge those men who've reached the pinnacle of their profession, the Toronto Maple Leafs, who are in hockey's Hall of Fame. Uh, was something that I had dreamed about for years and years to wear a Maple Leaf uh, sweater and to be part of the team. It was uh, something that's very, very difficult for me to put into words. There's the man who shaped the Leaf tradition of hard work. The longest standing captain and, as Paul Morris mentioned, a member of the 32 Stanley Cup champions, Red. Corner. The gardens was my home for 10 years, and it was the finest building around at the time, and we uh, had the greatest fans because they really uh, looked after the guys and uh, treated them on all the time. And I also played with, I think, the greatest players around at that time. Harry wore number four in the fabulous 40s, and that's appropriate. It goes with the four Stanley Cups. A strapping and elegant man who scored the game winner in 1948 versus the Detroit Red Wings, Harry Watson. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen and hockey fans throughout Canada, I have to apologize that I'm not at the uh, game tonight for the closing of Maple Leaf Gardens. Unfortunately, it's in conflict with a, an operation that I've had planned for many months now, and uh, I've been uh, operated on, and I'm in the hospital uh, recuperating. It's, it's the the reason I'm being operated on is my knees are given out. I guess it's partly because of the, the punishment they take as a hockey player. That's for you, Teeter, and it's going to get better. At the summer cottage, the most haunting sound we all know in Canada is the sound of the loon. The only sound close occurred here at Maple Leaf Gardens. Remember the fan's name was John Arnott. Leather lungs would wait for the appropriate moment when the Toronto Maple Leafs required inspiration, and he'd holler, come on, Teeter. Well, it happened to Red Horner. He had the knee replacement surgery. Scotty Bowman, it happens to all the best of them, Teeter. But I know you're looking in this evening. You were great in kissing a princess and in helping the Rocket with the Boxing Day celebration, and we'll see at the Air Canada Centre. But to you from us in hospital right now as you overcome that knee surgery, Folks, I'll count you down on a count of three, two, one. Let's say what we ought to say to Mr. Kennedy. Three, two, one. Well, it was the uh, last year of the six-team league. We all realized this. It was a momentous occasion, really. Uh, it's an amazing thing, you know, this, this win that year, it did more for the players of that year, our time, than anything else that ever happened in the league. Used to be used on important face-offs as well. When they turned around the Toronto team in the late 1950s and built that immense blue line brigade, they started with this man, Mr. Alan Stanley. You know, one of the big one of the big goals in my uh, career was against scored against the uh, Gump Worsley the New York Rangers. Frank Mahalis took a shot and he could fire the puck and Gump made the save, but the puck bounced and uh, he didn't know where it was. He tried to uh, cover it up and it was laying right by his shoulder. I reached in and shoved it into the net and it was a winning goal and certainly a, a big goal for us uh, in our lifetime. It's impossible not to love Leonard. Four Stanley Cups with the wings. Four Stanley Cups in Toronto. He did it as a defenseman and as a forward. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Red Kelly. Well, I guess my uh, best memory of Maple Leaf Gardens is uh, my first game here. I was uh, 12 years old, and my dad brought me down to watch his friend Toad Blake play a game here. Heart and soul, a true leader for the Toronto Maple Leafs and then for the kids on the Marley squads. Leaf captain, the chief, George Armstrong. One of the greatest memory I had, I think, I had quite a number of them, but the greatest one I'd say is the 62 series. That's the first Stanley Cup they won, and I waited to have my name engraved on that Stanley Cup for a long, long time. Grace was never an issue with Johnny. He would do absolutely anything to stop that puck. He was fearless. He was number one with pride, and he's obviously number one to all Toronto Maple Leaf fans, Johnny Bauer. The biggest moment would be the 67 Stanley Cup final, the last game when uh, Imlac put five of us on the ice, the oldest five players, and uh, George Armstrong scored and he opened up. That's the most powerful moment, the biggest moment in my life. Well, thanks to this man, Chicago Blackhawks were reasonably well rested tonight. I have to tell you, it's a beautiful thing to see Bobby Probert score the last goal here at the Gardens. He's been through a lot. I saw Reed Simpson miss an open net last night. He came back with two big goals, the Flynn Flaw native. That's uh, Bob's Blackhawks now. But as you know, he was a guiding light for the Toronto Maple Leafs in the 1960s, especially that 67 Cup. Bob Pulford. I have a number of uh, moments. The one that stands out in my mind, of course, was uh, 1957 on a Christmas uh, day, and I scored my first hat trick as a Toronto Maple Leafs. It was my rookie year, and uh, it seemed like uh, everything was going my way that night, and uh, uh, I was amazed myself. Close your eyes and listen. You might hear the sound of those blades flying down the wing. The big M, Frank. Mohavlich. Uh, I've always admired the loyalty of the Toronto fans and would like to thank them for the support they gave me through the years that I played here. It's been a great run. His star kept getting brighter and brighter. A tenacious checker, a brilliant goal scorer. Hockey Hall of Famer, Norm Ullman. The greatest moment I had here in Maple Leaf Gardens is the night I scored 10 points in a game against the Boston Bruins. Uh, why it happened, I don't know. Um, Still a record today, 23, 24 years later. It's an event that uh, most Canadians remember because Hockey Night in Canada broadcasted it from coast to coast and uh, special night. He never flinched. Ten points in a single game. Five goals in a Stanley Cup playoff game. Nine consecutive games with a goal. Your captain, Daryl Sittler. I don't know if there was ever a defining moment. I, I think it was just the fact uh, that you were a part of something very special. 
Uh, it was Maple Leaf Gardens. It was skating out onto the ice and, and looking up at the, at the rafters and banners and knowing that, that this was, uh, in my opinion, the grandest of them all. And, uh, I don't think there was a moment it was everything about it. The hottest hands in Toronto and the kindest embrace, Machine Gun Lanny McDonald. Well, I remember when uh, Daryl Sickner set me up in the playoffs against the fans, throw out the flyers at the girls and set me on the breakaway. We burned up around and I scored. And the people at the gardens, they stood up and they gave me a standing ovation. And it was just amazing. Just amazing. I never forget. One of a couple of great treats from Sweden. The King, Boreas Salming. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the greatest men ever to wear the Maple Leaf, the Toronto Maple Leaf Hall of Famers. This is where King and Harold used to sit to take in the games. It's, of course, where the Leaf alumni now enjoy the Maple Leaf broadcasts. We want to feature the last three captains of the Toronto Maple Leafs. One of King's heroes and one of the nicest photos ever to grace the gardens was a photo of King Clancy with a captain who's now playing in Tampa. I believe you all know his name. He came here as a raw kid from Kelvington, Saskatchewan in 1985. First pick overall, and he laid his body and his heart and his soul on the line for his team. He was a great example in the mid-80s of how the Leafs were able to rise up. Yes, that's good. You like my hat. Well, we liked many of the hat tricks. Compliments of the first captain we want to honor, Wendell. I guess the, the favorite moment uh, as a Leaf and the Gardens is it would have been my rookie season, 85-86, all of that year. And also the playoffs between 92 and 94, uh, almost making it to the Stanley Cup Finals and the excitement in the building I've, uh, is one of the best things I've seen. Sorry, Wendell, you couldn't be here, but you're here in our hearts like another Leaf captain, Davey Keon. Davey was relentless. He was always relentless. He would never give in. So, Davey, you're doing your thing tonight. We miss you badly. But our love goes out to you as part of the spirit of the great Maple Leaf tradition. There's a chap sitting on the visitor's bench tonight who might remember an incident that happened here in 1993. He was a Maple Leaf and he set up behind the net. It was about 100 degrees at Maple Leaf Gardens. There was a goalie you just could not solve named Curtis Joseph of the St. Louis Blues. It was overtime. In fact, it was double overtime. And a cat and mouse game began. Gilmore, Joseph, Gilmore, Joseph. Do you remember what happened next? The, the biggest goal of my career was uh, Toronto. Um, second round, game one, double overtime. Just a great feeling. Got caught behind the net, happened to score. What about the fans, the Gardens fans, Dougie? Uh, all I can say is thank you. 
love him, and uh, it's something I'll never forget. And let's be honest, seeing that great moment reminds us of why we've always hated Wayne Gretzky. Oh, I'm, I'm just kidding, Wayne. You were Dougie's idol, and uh, you brought us many great thrills here as well. Well, the last captain we get to acknowledge is the man who will wear the C for the final time. He did it tonight for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Captain Max Sundin. Well, uh coming to Toronto and, and get a chance to play in, in uh, Maple Leaf Gardens, uh, to follow in Boris Salming, my childhood hero's footsteps, uh, play for the, the best hockey fans in the world, and the, probably the best hockey city in the world, has so, certainly been a uh, dream come true for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Mets Sundin. The world has come to Con Smythe's place. Well, you can't go through 68 years with the fans and the players alone. A lot of people have helped to develop the dreams and memories experienced here, and we want to take some moments out to thank those people behind the scenes. Let's look at some of the folks who made Maple Leaf Gardens tick. My name is Henry, and we've been here for 24 years. My name is Bernie Fournier. My title is Assistant Manager of the Building Operation. We're ready for you. We're the absolute best. I'm going to miss Maple Leaf Gardens. I mean, it's been my home for 47 years. I, I have spent more time here than anywhere else. This is home. I've been here 18 years and I love every minute of it. Enjoy the game. I've been working here for 23 seasons. It's going to be a pretty emotional night for me, I think. Hi, Mom. I wonder if my hair is cold. <laughs> My name is Rosa Neal. I've been here for 47 years. Connie Smythe was in charge. Ballard was in charge. And who's in charge of the hot dogs, Rosa? I'm in charge of the hot dogs. <laughs> Get right in here, sir. I was here for two uh, Stanley Cups in 64 and 67, and I was hoping to see another one in Maple Leaf Gardens, but I'm afraid I'm not gonna see one now. Thank you. Dennis Goodwin, I started uh, in 1949, January the 1st, so I celebrated my 50 years this month. Dennis, 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 Dennis. It's been uh, a joy actually working, and uh, the fans and the subscribers, the section, uh, the people. It's the best thing a guy can do on a Saturday night in Toronto. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the employees of Maple Leaf Gardens with 50 years experience, you all know Dennis Goodwin. With 47 years each, Rosa Neal and Bernie Fournier. 
She's 100 years old, and she was in telling Don Cherry what's going on tonight. Bessie Lampson. Congratulations, staff. You made the place sing. We now want to celebrate the Stanley Cups. And we begin with a period of domination, six Stanley Cups in 10 years from 1942 to 51. And the best beginning of all comes from that unique story, the only time a team has ever rallied from a 3-0 deficit in a Stanley Cup championship. Let's go back to 1942. The streak started in 42. Some warmth for those Cold War years. Hello, Canada and hockey fans in the United States and Newfoundland. And an extra big hello to Canadian serviceman overseas. No team had done it before. Gone down by three games in a final, then pulled out the miracle. And no team has done it since. But the 1942 Leafs did it. Fell down 3-0 in the last round. The Wings even invited Toronto to a victory party after game four in Detroit. The drama grew, and the Red Wings went up 2-0 in period one. But Turk Broda drew a line that launched the greatest comeback of all. And it kicked off a glorious Leaf era. They were hockey's kings back in the 40s. Champions in 42, they added another crown in 45. Then the boys in blue rolled on to take three in a row, 47, 48, and 49. Half Day's Leafs, Con Smythe's pride, and a core of never give up hearts. Broda, Kennedy, Apps, Davidson, Drillen, Meeker, Stewart, and the Mets boys, Nick and Dawn. Those Leafs were a powerhouse. Then in 51, they did it again, here at home. They wove a piece of hockey mythology for this grand hockey temple. Destiny met Bill Barilko in overtime at the south end to our right. The greatest Leaf goal of them all capped off the greatest Leaf run ever. Six Stanley Cups in just nine years. And from the hand of fate, Barilko. A hero for all time. Ten men whose names appear on the most coveted trophy in sport are here at Maple Leaf Gardens this evening, and we'd like to bring them to center ice so that you can say thank you for that wondrous period for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Pete Langell is here this evening. So is Harry Watson, Gay Stewart, Donnie Metz, Elwin Morris, Cal Gardner, Bill Juzda, Danny Lewicki, Fleming McKell, John McCormick, Gus Mortson, and Sid Smith all sipped from Stanley. champions, each and every one. We want to shift our focus now to the 1960s, another grand period in Toronto Maple Leaf history, four Stanley Cups. It was the time when Foster Hewitt was set to hand over the reins to Bill Hewitt, who could introduce us to a new set of heroes. The 
we lose the puck. You fellas will take after Hall. You'll check them. You'll look for them. And pick them up right away. The Punch Years. Still shining out from the twilight of that glorious era when there were just six teams and legends everywhere. Four Stanley Cup championships in six years, a dynasty for certain, all built around a core that included some of the most popular players ever to wear the blue and white. The goes to Mahopolis, over to Nemeth, he shoots, scores! Bernie Nemeth and Harvin has tied it up for the Maple Leafs. Hard-working, unselfish players who defined the very essence of the Leafs, the gardens, this whole country. Over the blue line, around Del Vecchio, he shoots the door! They won through sheer effort, strength of heart and will, and they taught everyone who watched a little bit about team. Victory in the finals of the Stanley Cup for an unprecedented second run of three straight years. He grabs the Keon. Keon shoots. Hits going down the ice. Del Vecchio missed it. It's sliding. Sliding all the way into the net. And they go on to make the lead. And won the Stanley Cup. In 62, 63, and 64, Punch Imlock's Leafs ruled the NHL. Supreme champions on hockey's highest plane. It is my pleasure and responsibility to present to the winners for the tenth time the Stanley Cup emblematic of the world championship. Then in 1967, the last year before expansion, on the 100th birthday of our nation, the Imlock era reached its full height. Leafs to the bone. They banded together once again, took the Habs to game six, and won it all. That team was never expected to go that far, but they did. And they gave the Gardens one of the greatest nights ever, a Stanley Cup, this building's last. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to center ice the stars of the fabulous 1960s. We'll begin with the men who have one Stanley Cup ring, and that list includes Kent Douglas, Brian Conacher, Larry Jeffrey, Marcel Pronovo, Pete Stemkowski, and Mike Walton. With two championship victories are Al Arbor, Dick Duff, Bob Nevin, and Jim Pappen. Three times lucky, Carl Brewer, Billy Harris, and Ed Litzenberger. And nine Maple Leafs played for all four Stanley Cup winners. There with us tonight, George Armstrong, Bobby Bond, Johnny Bauer, Larry Hillman, Red Kelly, Frank Mahovlich, Bob Pulford, Alan Stanley, and the entertainer, Eddie Shack. The champions. turns the page. We have reached a defining moment, and to help us with that, we'd like to call upon our banner bearers. These are some young hockey players who have dreams themselves.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call Red Horner and Matt Sundin to center ice. Take this flag to our new home, but always remember us. Thanks, Red. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to tell you, there have been a lot of firsts at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. This beautiful structure that went up in 1931 was the first to have the nice white paint in the ice so that we could see the puck better. The first to have that gorgeous Herculite glass, no other arena like that. The first to have the floodlights, the first to have the goal lights, the first to have escalators. But tonight's the last. Tonight's the last. And the men who wear the blue and white and the people who brought them to the gardens in Toronto have helped to make the last the best of all. And we want to thank them and thank all the fans across Canada in the way we can only do it at Toronto. And that's to welcome after Stomp and Tom, like Con Smythe put his foot down, uh, we have to introduce somebody who can help this place take flight as we get set to move one week from tonight to the Air Canada Centre. Who more appropriate than Canada's Songbird? Always a great hockey fan. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Anne Murray. Ladies and 
Ladies and gentlemen, last minute of play. Oh, maple leaf around the world, you speak as you rise high above of courage, peace, and quiet strength of the Canada that I love. Remind us all our union bound by ties we can Right plague revered on every ground The maple leaf forever Long may it wave and grace our own Blue skies and stormy weather Within my heart, above
Well, what a star-studded cast in the closing ceremonies at Maple Leaf Gardens tonight. Anne Murray, Stump, and Tom Connors, but most of all, over a hundred former Toronto Maple Leafs. And the issue is already on the streets. The Toronto Sun, the puck stops here. Paper is already out, so the business of hockey at Maple Leaf Gardens is now complete with the closing ceremonies. The curtain has been brought down on almost 68 years of memories and dreams in this Canadian landmark. This great and admired lady has been just fine since 1931. Thank you. Well, times change and one must move on. This is a night to celebrate the old days, to honor all who've passed here, all those who've played the game. Like my father.